For Krima Media's Polity Yamtabi Madiba, author Ntikeng Mosele joins me to discuss his book titled Michael K. Can you briefly tell us who is Ntikeng Mosele? He's a writer, he's a South African, he's an African, and a global citizen, and a Johannesburger, primarily. What inspired you to write a so-called sequel to J.M. Kudzia's Life and Times of Michael K? It's literature. Inspiration is everywhere. It's in life. It's in art. It's in people. It's in time. It's in history. It's in civilizations. It's in the world around us and the world we perceive and we imagine. For those who are unfamiliar with the original Michael K character, how should they approach this book? I believe anywhere they want, really. I don't think that Artists should be prescriptive uh, how their work comes across or how readers should interact with it. Uh, but it would help them to read the original book. I think my book stands on its own two feet, but it helps enrich the reading experience if they are familiar with the text um, on which this one is loosely based. It's not a wholesale adaptation of, of, the li of Life and Times of Michael Kay. Um, it stands on its own feet, very much so. Is there a vast difference in your representation of Michael K compared to that of J.M. Kudzia's Michael K? Um, adaptations work with linkages and alignment, so it would have been uh, pointless to depart too much from the original. Uh, but my book actually uses that as a springboard to explore other themes of interest that I have including power relations, contemporary South Africa, corruption, um, gender balances, and you know frictions between uh, society and uh, countries, for that matter. What was your biggest challenge in trying to bring Michael Kay into the present? Um, it's the passing of time. The original was written in 83. Or thereabouts. So a lot of time has actually elapsed. And um, J.M. Kutsi wrote uh, Michael K. in a different time. Uh, a lot has happened. We live in the information age now, for instance. And um, the way people relate to literature is not exactly the same as then. So part of the challenges was to say, if you're going to take this very famous artwork, and bring it into the present. Um, there has to be value still in the work that I create. So that was the major challenge. Because you don't want it to just be a copycat in creating that work. But you need to actually be informed about um, reading around the original and avoiding creating the obvious. Briefly, talk to us about the character Miles and his fascination with Michael Kay. Miles is the counterweight um, to the Michael K character. That is your plot device, really, because it's, it's through him and his perspective in how he sees the world that you are engaged or immersed into the world of Michael K. If you remove Miles, you do not have a reflective, um, how shall I put it, paradigm in which to relate to the Michael K character. Dust Island is a fictional place in your book. Talk to us a bit more about this place and how it developed. Uh, South Africa is a beautiful country, so is the world. So are many uh, geographical localities. But part of the writer's responsibility, I believe, is not to only photocopy what is there. There is great fun in making stuff up that is not there. Talk to us about the character of Von Ludwig and his relationship with Miles. That is the philosophical counterweight of the characters in the book as well. Uh, because from him, he brings the artistic sentiments and themes of the book to, to the fore. Because he thinks so deeply about the themes. And it helps me, as the creator of the work, to be able to deal with themes, not in a fragmented way, but in a way that is consistent with the plot line of the book. Take us through the scene in your book of Michael Kay's funeral and the original author J.M. Kudzia's in attendance. So was this some sort of literal closure? Um, I don't think um, I would say it was or it wasn't. I think it's up to readers and 
people that are trained to be critics of books. I'm just a novelist, and I try to wear a hat of an artist and not try to do everything. Uh, leave space for people to reflect and interpret the work um, the way they see uh, fit. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's closure because works of art, there, there's no closure. I'm sure that there's people studying the Mona Lisa even now. There's people rediscovering uh, already concluded um, discoveries on the Renaissance art, for instance, or on African sculpture, for instance, or on African dance, for instance. So art is a very elliptical, circular, and um, recurrent phenomenon. So I wouldn't think that there is closure per se. I think this w would be one counter dimension of looking at the work of, 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 of John Kutsi. Other people might interpret it differently, and that's okay. And lastly, have you any idea if J.M. Kutsia has read your book, and do you think you have done the character of Michael K. Justice? I am not sure if J.M. Kutsia has read the book. That has never been my concern. My concern has been to write, to reflect on a work of art that uh, happens to be a very important cultural, um, how do I put it? Um, cultural product in the South African liter uh, liter literature canon. So from that point of view, I think that I have done it justice. The way I work as an artist, a work would never see the day of light, as in be published and be on the shelf, unless I was absolutely convinced that I have given it my all as an artist. So the answer is an emphatic yes. I think I've done my best. And I stand by the book, and I'm very proud of the book. That was author Ntikeng Moslele speaking to Krima Media's Polity about his book titled Michael Kay.